Number three, referring to figure 23.57 letter A, what is the direction of the current induced in coil number two? Letter A, if the current in coil one increases. All right, so um, this is all talking now, now about basically induction. So uh, let's think about what's happening. So what's going to happen here is in coil number one, they say that the current is increasing. Now, if the current is increasing, right, going in a counterclockwise direction, Remember, uh, currents produce their own magnetic fields. We talked about that all in chapter 22. So if the current is increasing, we know also that the magnetic field that is being produced by this particular current is also increasing. And we already know the direction of the magnetic field, right? This loop is identical to the one we studied in number one and number two, so check those out if this is confusing. So when the, let's pick this, this particular point, you know, at that particular, particular point, the tangential current is pointing upwards. If we're going to use right hand rule number two, we know now if the current is pointing up, your thumb is pointing up, that means your fingers are going to curl now around this particular wire here, and it's going to go into the page and then out of the page on the other side, right? And it's going to go into the page all over the place, right? All above, or I should say to the right of this particular point. So now, this magnetic field that I just drew here with the X's pointing into the page is increasing in strength. Okay. Now this is all about induction. There will then be a current that is induced in this wire here. I'm not drawing the direction at all right now. I'm just drawing, I'm just highlighting the wire. It might be kind of clockwise. It might be clockwise. We'll see. But this changing magnetic field will induce a current in this wire such that the magnetic field produced by this current will oppose the increasing magnetic field. Okay, will oppose the change. All right, so think about this. As there's almost more and more X's, right? As this field is increasing, this magnetic field as the current here is increasing, there's more and more X's, right? So what that means now is that a current will be generated in this wire to oppose that increasing magnetic field going into the page. Now, the only way there's going to be, you're going to oppose an increasing magnetic field going into the page is if you have an increasing magnetic field coming out of the page, right? Increasing magnetic field now coming out of the page. That's the only way you're going to oppose an increasing magnetic field here going into the page, right? So the question now, it's almost like we are reverse engineering it. So in order for there to be an increasing now, right, put more dots in here, an increasing magnetic field pointing out of the loop there, the question is what direction should the current go? Should the current go clockwise or should the current go counterclockwise? Well, you might, you might already know the answer, okay? What do you think? You can use right hand rule number two to help you identify this. Your fingers must be curling inside, right? They, when they curl inside the wire, they have to be pointing out of the page. And the only way it's going to do that, actually look over here. Didn't we already say that it's going to be pointing into the page? Excuse me, out of the page? I'm going to try to confuse you as much as I can with the words here. <laughs> uh, didn't we already conclude that there's going to be a, a magnetic field coming uh, out of the page here? when this is rotating in a counterclockwise fashion? Yes, so that is then the same answer here. You can apply right hand rule number two, all right, to identify that. So, so the current here will be flowing counter clockwise because that is the direction of the current here, right? And we already uh, mentioned that the counterclockwise current over here would create magnetic field vectors going into the page uh, excuse me, going out of the page um, in, inside. So what we're now going to do is we're now going to move on to letter B. All right. So let's erase this now. Let's see what's happening in letter B. So letter B, it says, if the current in coil one now decreases, so what's happening here is that the current is still going in a counterclockwise fashion. So it's still producing here magnetic field vectors that are going into the page. Okay. But, let's put a little more in here. But what's happening now is that the amount of the of magnetic field, essentially, or the strength, I should say, of the magnetic field is now decreasing. 
So let's get rid of some of those X's. So what's going to happen now? Keep in mind that we just erase some of the magnetic field, okay? That the magnetic field is uh, reduced in strength. The rule is that a current will be induced in this coil now such that it opposes the change, okay? So if the magnetic field, right, that was going into the page is becoming reduced, that means the only way to counteract that change is to put more, right, put more blue X's, right, put more magnetic field vectors into the page. So the question now becomes, well, what direction of current should be flowing in this loop such that it produces a magnetic field going into the page inside the loop? So it's going to be exactly opposite to what we have here, right? Notice that when the when we have a counterclockwise current, the magnetic field vector inside the loop here, right, is going to be going uh, out of the page. And now we want it to go into the page. So therefore, it has to go in the exact opposite direction. Right, exactly opposite. So it has to be going in a clockwise direction now. Okay. Let us see if the current in coil one is constant. Uh, so if the current in coil one is constant, then there is no uh, induced current. Okay, uh, because the rule is that uh, a a current in a wire will only be induced, in other words, created more or less, when there is a changing flux okay when there is a changing flux and the flux and that's i'm basically talking about this formula over here all right because if there's an emf produced we know that emf is basically voltage and that's meaning ir right more or less uh according to ohm's law so there's a current that's created okay there is a current that's created when there is a changing magnetic flux now the magnetic flux is a function of both the magnetic field and the area so if the area changes, guess what? You get a change in magnetic flux, and if you get a change in magnetic flux, you get an EMF, in which case then the current will change. But in this case, they're saying that the, um, that the current is staying constant in coil one, right? So that means the magnetic field being produced by coil one and the area being produced by coil one is all constant. Nothing is changing, right? Nothing is changing. So what that means now is that there is no changing magnetic flux. If there is no changing magnetic flux, if this thing goes to zero, then that means there is no induced current. That's this side has to go to zero. All right. So for letter C, then, um, you know, the the answer to this would be uh, there would be it, there'd be no induced current. <laughs> All right. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully that helps help us out if you can. All right. And check out some of our other videos. We'll see you soon. Bye.